Our next guest is a talented singer and songwriter you know from both his solo career and work with One Direction. His third solo on the show will be out in June and available to pre-order now. He will also be a coach on the newest season of The Voice, which premieres March 6th at 8 p.m. here on NBC. Let's take a look. I nearly hit my button on your first note. <laughs> Long enough for me to actually figure it out before him. Mm -hmm. Please, Kelly, come on, <laughs> give me a chance. You remind me so much of my good friend, Maren Morris. Oh my God. I've spent a lot of time in the States over the years and become very, 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 very fond of country music. And country always leads into storytelling. And I tend to do that. Your voice, the control, it was just unbelievable. And I'm telling you, we're gonna do big things together if you come with me. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please welcome to the show, Niall Horan, everybody. I'm happy to be here, huge fan of the show. Uh, we were very lucky to, I was very lucky, I should say, to work with you about 10 years ago. Mm. You, uh, you uh, fellas were on the show and we did a sketch. I was on set for where Paul Rudd was the number one. Uh, there we see Paul. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I've spoken for years about how uh, you, were the, you were the nicest group of guys. And I mean, you were fairly young at the time. Was that an exciting thing to do? Oh yeah, it was crazy to be part of SNL on a few occasions was uh, is so cool, but um, that particular weekend, Paul was was hosting the show, and uh, the Anchorman crew were there. They, yep. were, they were going, they were promoting Anchorman Two. You got to sing with well, the. A this is a, two of the great casts of all time. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anchorman being like no joke, my favorite movie of all time, <laughs> and um, to be standing there singing Afternoon Delight. <laughs> With that bunch of lunatics was um, was pretty special. Yeah, it was, pretty it was cool. uh, the other funny thing about the sketch with Paul. I remember is of course we had a great many extras who also were big One Direction fans, and uh, it was the the least we ever had to give direction <laughs> to uh, yeah, to yeah. a group of young girls. Applause, applause, applause. Yeah, yeah, like, remember screaming. when they walk out like lose your minds, <laughs> and they were like, you know, I think we can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we can sort that out. <laughs> uh, so this is very exciting. You have a new single out. Yes, you I do. have a, a new album. <laughs> I think a lot of people, you know, the, a lot of artists, uh, you know, reacted different ways to the pandemic and what it put them through. Did you, yeah. uh, did you feel like you wanted to start working on new music right away? Did you give yourself a little time? Because it's been a while since you, about three years? Yeah, exactly. I know I kind of, I'd released an album <laughs> the day we were told we were going into lockdown. <laughs> um, some would say that was great timing. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it was, it was one of those things where I'd release an album and then it, that happened and then the tour got canceled. So I was thinking like, I was kind of just angry at the world like we all were. Yep. So then I was kind of sitting around, waiting for something to happen, waiting for the, <laughs> the creative juices to flow. <laughs> Took a while. Um, and then once it, once it came, it kind of, it opened the door for what is now a finished, you know, a finished product, record. Uh, very exciting. I wonder, do you, I mean, obviously you work on these songs and, and uh, you know, there's a, a lot of post-production on the music and then you finally get it to a place where you're happy with it and then it gets released to the world. Are you someone who, are you, do you sort of anticipate the reaction to mm. it? Are you already, have you already moved on to the next? No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just always so nervous. Like, it's the biggest cliche. You know? Yeah. And whenever you, whenever you work on something, you just obviously wanted to do well. Like, and, <laughs> uh, but you, we have no idea, especially these days. It's hard to know if what, it's so competitive out there. Um, but the f I've got a, as you can hear, I've got a, <laughs> I've got a, a, I'm lucky enough to have a strong, solid fan <laughs> yeah. base that, that uh, yeah. having said that, you st having said that, you still don't know. So I'm just like, after three years of not releasing music, there's that like, please do good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but the reaction to this single, first of all, has been ridiculous, which makes me feel a lot better about the record. There you go, it's very <laughs> exciting. And now this is really exciting because you talked about your last tour being canceled. Uh, you're going on the road this summer and yeah. you're doing a, a great many festivals, which is different than sort of doing a more sort of conventional tour. Are you excited about uh, festival life? I think that was what I, the main thing I wanted to do when I, when I was finishing off the record, I said to everyone, like, I would love to just do a summer of festivals, especially having spent so much time away. It's good to get back in, in front of people in that way, you know, like, and go all over the world, and we're doing them all over Europe and Japan and a couple here in the States. And, um, like, it's, it's just going to be good to, to feel the love. And I'm, I'm a huge festival goer myself. I've been that drunk guy. Yeah. Well, um, 
standing in my welly boots uh, in a field going, who's that up there? I, I like the sound of that. So I, I, I want, that's why I wanted to do it. I could get some new fans here, Seth. Well, absolutely. Well, this is, this speaks to the level of difficulty of a festival because obviously, you know, you have a group of people who are all music fans, mm -hmm. but, you know, specifically, they might be less there to see you. Correct. Like, they might be there to see the person before you, the person after you. So mm -hmm. you do have to win them over. And I think it's really impressive that you, you want to take on that challenge oh, because sure. you don't necessarily have to, but I think that'll be so exciting. No, it's a great, it's a great way of getting, like, new people, as you say. There's there's a solid group there, but it's it's you know I'd love to invite more people into into the world. Do you uh, do you feel like you get to meet uh, and hang out with other bands in the festival world? Is that one one of the upsides? Yeah, no, they're they're always good. <laughs> yeah. like you, you meet people that you'd no idea you had anything in common with, yeah. and before you know it, it's two o'clock and it's, <laughs> um, it's been a good night. Yeah. <laughs> and as Europe, is it uh, is it buses around Europe when you're doing festival? Yeah, there's a lot of because they're. They're so far apart, all the countries, you do have to do a lot of flying. Yeah. Uh, when we're in the States, it's a lot of buses. And do you enjoy, is, is bus life, because I feel like there's something a little romantic about it, maybe for the first three days. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're like, you've seen Spinal Tap twice. <laughs> and, uh, and now you think, you know, that's how it's done. <laughs> and then it's like 105 degrees in Houston, Texas. <laughs> first week of July and it's sweaty and you've woken up and the air conditioning's broken. <laughs> it's just like, maybe not as romantic as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, one place that's very well air conditioned, I've heard, is the studio for The Voice. So yes. congratulations on that gig. <laughs> <laughs> is this, how did this come to pass? I'm assuming this is a situation where your phone just rang one day and they reached out. Literally. Um, huh? Phone call from, from the producers, uh, Audrey and Kira. And they just said, before you even say anything, just come in and meet us. And they explained how the show works and, and all, all that good stuff. And I was like, yeah, let's, let's, let's just give it a go, see what happens. Um, I've been on a show like that. Of course, yeah. So I, 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 un <laughs> I do, I understand, <laughs> I understand how it works. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it was just a, a challenge, something that I wasn't expecting. Right. Uh, you know, a great time to do it before, you know, I've got a record coming out. <laughs> um, and you're going to be sick of my faces. Uh, <laughs> or my, or sick of my face. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's been so fun. Just like, we were very lucky with the, with the crew of coaches that I'm with. Yeah. You know, it could have been horrific. You know, you're sitting there every night pretending that you like the person you're sat next to. <laughs> but we, I got very lucky in, uh, in Blake Shelton alone. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, well, I would imagine, too, having gone through a show like this, you, you must have... Because obviously it looks very exciting what we see on television, but you obviously are in this situation where you can have empathy with them for what they're going through because I think we all maybe forget how stressful it is for an unknown artist to, especially in a room like that, to be in front of four very accomplished, very famous yeah. singers. Yeah. It must, they must feel nice knowing I'm being like, oh, I, I know Niall's been on this side. Yeah, I guess that's a part of the room. <laughs> that was a big one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, no, it, it is, it's a good... I think that that's how I got half of my team because they understand that I've got that empathy with them. I was, you know, there's eight, 17, 18, 19 year old people coming on here. Yeah. And I was that 16 year old just kind of knowing that that person there has got my future in their <laughs> hands. And it's a, uh, that's, that's the hardest thing about the voice is like, I have to make in game decisions over two singers that are standing in front of me, um, knowing that I have their future uh, in my hands. And that's the, that's the part that I feel like the empathy side of me. I hope yeah. I don't lose it because I would be heartless yeah. if I did, lo did well, lose it. Well, I that. think if you want to know what it, it's like to be without empathy, that feels like probably what Blake Shelton Blake is, Shelton, right? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> after, after 12 years. <laughs> 12 years and 23 seasons. Yeah. Yeah, he's stone cold. He's stone cold. I'm a man who, this is his last season. Yeah. Obviously, he's had a great amount of success on, uh, on the show. Whenever he's here, um, he, he is not shy about bragging about his success. Yeah. Has he been giving you a hard time? Because he also seems very good at that. Uh, that's all he does. Yeah. Anywhere. <laughs> to everyone that will listen to him or don't want to listen to him. <laughs> He's just constantly just nailing everyone. <laughs> He's a very charismatic and affable bully. Yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. He, that, that's exactly what he is. But he's an absolute beauty. And, uh, you know, he's, he's going to be missed around that show. Like, he, he is the voice, probably in his head, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, he's... Uh, He's so good to work with, and uh, yeah, he'll be missed around there for sure. I mean, the, yeah, I think one of the reasons the show is so exceptional is the, you know, the uh, connection you guys all have together and the chemistry. Yeah. Um, do you do you feel like, w and when he leaves, do you feel like you will have a, a good Blake Shelton impression? Do you have one yet? A Blake Shelton? Uh, <laughs> it's my, it's my, I feel like a politician every time I do it. Yeah. Uh, it's my last season on The Voice. 
And I would love if you would be on the last ever Team Blake. <laughs> and he says that to every single person that comes out. <laughs> Win, lose, or draw. Yeah. That's I will line. tell you, I'm, I know you said you felt like a politician, but when you said that and looked at me, I was like, I want to be on Team Blake. It totally <laughs> yeah. worked. It was very convincing. I need, I need a catchphrase. Yeah, you <laughs> got to work on it. Um, hey, man, what a pleasure to have you here. I really can't thank, thank you. you enough. And thank congratulations on the new music. Niall Horan, his new album, The Show. It's available for pre-order now, and The Voice premieres March 6th at 8 p.m. right here on NBC. Right back for a late night.